So friends, we're going to go out and visit the Storytellers Museum. Come with. So friends, I'm out here going to my friend Brian Oxley's farm. It was Johnny Cash's farm and it's called Storytellers. And he has different buildings and he has amazing things. Like, uh, if you've ever heard the Johnny Cash song about him working at the Cadillac factory with all the different year models, they actually made a Cadillac from all those different year models to put in Johnny's museum. And when they closed the museum, Brian got the car. I always wondered where it was, and the answer is, it is right here at Storytellers. So we're going to go see Brian. He's also the one that bought the rights to tear down or to take the stuff from uh, Colonel's house, and I was involved in that with Brian. And so this right here is it, and that was owned by Johnny Cash, that building right there, part of it. So there's a lot of things that are related to Johnny Cash that are out here. So we're going to take a look at all this, friends. So you see that it says Storytellers Museum and Highway Farm, home of the one piece of time at a time car, which was Johnny's song. I got a 49.51. 4950, 51, 52, 53 automobile. I can't hardly remember it, but it's something like that. He's really got a nice looking place out here. And I know that they have music here. They do a lot of different stuff. So they got a gospel concert store museum hideaway on the 40th anniversary of Elvis's untimely passing so they're doing that out here so they got it all set up friends and they have gospel concerts on the 12th 13th and 16th and I remember him telling me something about this building has something to do with Johnny Cash so we'll ask him about it it's a killer Coca-Cola sign in it. Look at how big that thing is. Take home a case, friends. Sombrero, anyone? So if you're ever out this way, this is Bon Aqua, which is south of Dixon. So if you're heading down I-40 between Memphis and Nashville, when uh, closer to Nashville, you'll pass Dixon. And when you get to the Dixon exit, instead of going north, you go south down to Dixon and you will find Bon Aqua. And it leads out to this place. That's the band bus. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And Brian lives, friends, in Johnny Cash's mom and dad's house across the street from where his house was that burned down in Hendersonville, the town I live in. He owns that house. Bet we can look inside this bus. This is a, is it a GMC or is it a MCI? Let me look. That's a GMC, 41043. It's got that familiar musty smell.
this was not Elvis's bus, but he had a bus very, very similar to this that was at Graceland years ago. And I don't know where that bus is now. I've tried to locate it, but haven't been able to figure it out. But I bet you I can figure it out. So this bus is actually a 4106. That's the answer. I knew it didn't look like a 4104. So it's actually newer than a 4104. And the one Elvis had was, was older. I think they called it a Vista liner or a Vista cruiser, Vista liner, something of that nature. But it looked very similar to that bus. So later this day, I asked Brian about the bus, and it turns out that's Tommy Cash's bus, which was Johnny's brother. That was his bus that he used. And this is at the corner of Old Highway 46 and Old Highway 46. These are rocks from the Colonel's house. And that's Brian right there. And he's driving. That was Johnny Cash's last pickup truck right there. Actually, it may not be Brian, but that was Johnny Cash's very last pickup. What's up? Hello. I'm waiting for Brian, man. What are you doing? Good, you got old Johnny's truck? Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe y'all drive that thing everywhere. That's amazing. So friends, this is Brian's sidekick pony and Brian called and told him to let me in the museum. So I'm going to go in and look around just a little bit. Come with. Wow. And they've really got so some cool see, stuff. This is kind of our ticket booth, our gift shop. So people can meet and buy tickets there. Uh, we have some uh, merchandise. Yeah. And those jewelry made by uh, Johnny's daughter, Tara Cash. Wow. That is uh, his jacket over there. And. Uh, Let me turn on light. Let me turn on Wow. Now what was that? Was that just in a store for? Yeah. Brian just kidding. He's our new salesman. He's our new t-shirt. And he from Antique Store. You want some chips? Oh no, I'm good. Thank you. Hey there, how are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm Billy. Nice to meet you. Yes, ma'am. And all the CDs, farm book, and Brian's, Brian's children's book. Yeah, he gave me one of those. Very cool. So this is really Minnie Pearl's dress. Wow. Man, this is amazing. I've seen him doing some concert things on Facebook up there. Sitting on there, that's the a stage over there. So this is that actual stage. Yeah, yep. Yep. So that's Johnny sitting on this actual stage right here, friends. Now where was this building when that stage was, was there? Was it here? Yeah, yeah. So this is the actual spot. This spot. And this is another picture. Mark. Mark Cash always so our customer, this is a little mark. <laughs> yeah. So that's our, that's our over there. So that's that door right there. Wow. Carl Perkins and yeah. Mark's father. Yeah, Cash. that's Carl Perkins yeah. and that's Tommy right yeah, there, yeah, yeah, Johnny's yeah. brother. Mm -hmm. 
Now, Mark came to the colonel's house, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he, he was the big guy. Buff guy? Mm -hmm. Or is that a different guy? No, that guy, muscle guy, is um, Johnny's uh, first grandson, I think. Yeah. Mark is not. That's a, that's a big fella. Yeah, yeah. So where did this piano come from? This piano actually traveled with Johnny more than 20 years. On the road with Johnny Cash. Yeah. yeah. We, we got it from Earl Pool Ball. From him. Amazing. Yeah, that three is original. Over there. Is it okay to play this? Wow. Now Dallas, I was just reading about, Dallas wrote, of course he wrote a lot of big stuff, but he wrote some Elvis songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Um, what's that? I forgot the name. Oh. Yeah. And he wrote Elvira as well. Oh, yeah. Elvira. <laughs> song I was on the Grand Ole Opry stage auditioning for the Tammy Wynette story, friends. <laughs> on the Grand Piano. Let's go. You don't get the context of yeah. the whole thing, okay? That's Johnny Cash's door at the farm he always kicked in. Wow. Hey, can I show him the kick <laughs> this place? He's got, a, <laughs> he's got a boot on there. <laughs> <laughs> what I often forget is keys to the farmhouse. <laughs> kick the front door. It's been kicked a few times, uh, too. Yeah, that's it. That's it. This is this building a year ago. Oh, wow. wow. And we so you thought, rescued it. Yeah, yeah. No, it was leaning. It was over. But when you see this little video we show you, and I'm, I'm going to be able to prove, but you're going to have to let me prove it. Hey, Mr. Yes. Spot Man. How off of that floor? You yes, know, the floor right. covering? You told yeah. me I could have it. Yeah. Now, this is the tree that was next to the fan club building. Right. Know? This is a branch of it, but... And is that the stump from it? That's the stump. Okay, from the same tree, because that was a huge tree. Yeah, now let me explain why this is so significant, okay? Back then, Elvis, what were some of his great gospel songs? He Touched Me, yeah. Grammy, His Hand and Mine. A lot of songs, imagery of God in his hand. This has one, two, three, four fingers and then look back here and you have a thumb back here mm -hmm. okay and a pierce okay but if you're let's say you're not into jesus which i am i know you are and i am too if you're not but yeah that pierce in there too that's that's incredible look at that and i've been told from everybody so i believe god no coincidence so he made this for today okay? I agree. now there's another way to look at this 
That's Johnny Cash. This is Carl Perkins, buddies touching each other. Elvis kind of went big his own way. And then over here is, is Carl, uh, not, uh, who's uh, Jerry Lewis, Jerry went Lee. his own way. And then what is this? A heart. And guess what that is? Sun Records. Mm -hmm. Sun Records, this is a and heart. It's streamed out of there. Yes, this is like blood going, and this is can be looked as a monument for the Million Dollar Quartet. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Now, yeah. I want you to listen. This, this is such a big, shocking news story. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Can I wake <laughs> you up? No. Okay. I, I want him to sing Hurt for You. Oh, we heard about this all day, Thomas. <laughs> and he, he's been and bragging you He's up, his man. first grandchild, and I will let you video it. Can you video it? There's no it? music. What? There's no music. No, but you just do it with your Acapella. guitar. Acapella. I don't, I don't usually play Hurt. But... Well, then how about the Folsom Prison? I don't usually play it either. Wait, I thought you were talking about God's Gonna Cut You Down. That you just well, he did that today, but you want to do that one? Okay. Okay, let's do God's Gonna Cut You Down. All right. Uh, you have to now stop I'm everything. I'm yes. shorts because I thought I was just coming to meet somebody. <laughs> yeah. No, and I told, I lied. I told him this is a famous guy. He's actually the spa guy. Hey, buddy, I'm I'm Billy. Hi, I'm nice Thomas. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes, Go get water. But he's, <laughs> yeah. he's my Go pride down. and joy. I'm more excited about him, and of course I was the same way for Mark because this is like, this is like. You shut your eyes and you'll you'll hear Johnny Cash. But he's not a fake impersonator. It's just his voice, you know. He's, he's the bloodline. He's Ken. Yeah. It's a little out of time to go. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, the president cut you down. Go and tell that long tongued liar, go and tell that midnight rider, tell the rambler, the gambler, the backbiter. Tell him that God's gonna cut you down. Tell him that God's gonna cut you down. I hurt myself today to see if I still feel. Try to focus on the pain, the only thing that's real. The needle tears a hole, the old familiar sting. Try to kill it all the way and I remember everything so you need to hear this this is important well when he was in town we always knew where he more than likely was because as soon as he came off the road you know wanted to get away wanted to be at home wanted to really be at home here's where he came and uh, you know he would hang out here as long as he possibly could and we'd come see him out here you know it wasn't convenient for us but uh, love coming out of here, man. It was, you know, this was his favorite place. This was when, when you were with him here, you had his attention. You know, it wasn't distractions of phones and people popping in and so on and so forth. You know, or the everyday hustle and bustle around his house. You know, I mean, it was employees there and so like, I didn't want all that. He wanted to be out here. This was his favorite place on earth. So we'd come out here and visit for a couple of days. Stay, everybody, you know, stay here. Or he'd pick one of his favorites of the week to come stay with him, whether it be a grandkid or a, you know, one of his daughters or whatever, John Carter. And it was uh, we had a, a lot of really good, uh, really good memories here. Some great memories. Some really, really good memories. Awesome. Some uh, getting in trouble memories. Some, <laughs> some uh, <laughs> visiting. Some, you know, reunions. We had. Uh, when blackberries came out, we came out here every year to pick blackberries and dodge the snakes. Uh, yeah, it was great, man. We, so being out here, especially living out here now, 
I, I feel since he's been gone, this is probably the closest I've ever felt to him. Being here, being where I know his heart was, mm -hmm. is, you know. Yeah. So it's been great. Eccentricity, in, however you say that, and, and genius comes in, you know, different packages. And my grandpa's genius was insight, you know, wisdom and insight. And then we'd be talking and on the back porch or whatever. You know, as a kid, you don't really pay attention to much around you, except for it's not fun, so I'm not going to pay attention to that. But um, we're sitting there talking, and he cut me off and said, shh, listen. So I'm listening for a car pulling up or whatever. I said, the bird just singing your song. Pay attention. I don't know, I'm going to stop what I'm saying and pay attention to this bird. But, you know, at the time it was like, wow, wow, weird. But, you know, now it's, now I actually do that. You know, mm -hmm. I don't tell my kids because they'd make fun of me. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, my kids would be like, yeah, you finally lost it. You've, got, you've gotten to that age. But, I mean, Yeah, that was that's what I mean. Is that's the that's what I saw. His genius was insight, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you, I mean, look at the songs and look at um, the way he moved through people's lives, you know, not just with uh, being famous, but the people that he actually came in contact with. Everybody's got a story about him. Everybody's got something unique. It wasn't just he shook my hand, he signed a piece of paper, and walked off. You know, it's like story I told you about him buying wood on the side of the road, but he bought the whole truck, you know, gave, bought the guy that got his truck and everything, you know. It's, um, it's not just about the wood. He really wanted to help that guy out, you know. That guy had worked hard for that. He didn't need that wood. I chopped the wood. We were, we were done with a bunch of wood. You know, he didn't need that wood, but he, he, he needed to do that. You know, I heard a sermon the other day that really got me. It was very, it's a Pastor of Booty Bible Institute, he was giving a talk, and he said something that kind of jarred me. He said, you know, I don't, I can't think anybody stingy, this conservative guy, stingy could possibly be a Christian. And he said, how can you be a Christian when you, re it means, how can you be stingy when you receive grace from God? He said, it, it bothers, you, you can't receive grace. All, and I thought, ooh, I better just assess my life here. But that was, I've never heard somebody say it. It's the pastor of Moody Bible Institute. And he says, if you're stingy, you're probably not a Christian. And the reason I'm telling this is, I, I heard, I read somewhere, he was in a motor, Roseanne tells the story, he's in a motorboat. And, the, and he was very generous. And see, this is what I love about Elvis and Johnny Cash's story. They were generous. And so when I heard this pastor say that, I said, Sally, that's why people love them. They weren't stingy. Both of them. Anyway, uh, Roseanne tells a story why they're speeding on, the, on that lake over there. And then the, the, the cabinet opens and he has some money in there. And it just floated into, you know blew away, and he said he didn't look back. He just kept going. She said, that's when I first understand my dad's philosophy of money. Hmm. He didn't care. Yeah, that you know how rare that is? So, friends, I'm going to be doing a bunch of different stories with Brian Oxley, and we're going to be doing some things, of course, about the Colonel's house. I have a ton of footage of that. And I'm going to be doing some things at Johnny Cash's farm out here in Bon Aqua. Um, this video was getting a little long, so I had to cut it a little bit short. But I'm also going to put an address here so you know if you're in this area, please stop through there and visit these guys. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I think they're open. And you can uh, they play live music, and Brian is just a fantastic fella. So if you see Brian out, tell him the spy guy said hello. And not only can you look in this museum, and they have Elvis artifacts here, Mini Pearl, as you saw, Johnny Cash, and all kinds of other stuff. But you can also go down to the farm and actually visit the farm. And there he has the One Piece of the Time Cadillac uh, from the famous song, as I was talking about. He has Johnny's Last Mercedes. He has uh, Mini Pearl's Last Eldorado. He has Johnny Paycheck's Limousine. He also has a wedding venue out there and a big music venue, an outdoor thing. 
and all kinds of cool stuff. So definitely stop by and see Brian and Sally Oxley. This place is fantastic, friends. Don't miss it. (laughs) 